Hello? Hi guys! <laughs> Happy Sunday everyone! I hope everyone's having a really nice weekend. Everyone's been having a good week. <laughs> Alright, first things first. Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. My name is Vanessa. Today we're going to be going over unicorns, which means we'll also be going over horses. So, no horsing around, I guess. Or maybe there will be a lot of that. Who knows? Anyways, if you didn't know, um... Our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. If you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out our links to our social media in the description below, and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors, because we're not just a YouTube channel, we're an art school too. If you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, um, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for channel exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they're gone. Whew. Okay, so anyways. <sighs> it's almost summer everybody so I hope everyone's like, you know, prepared for some fun stuff for that too as well. Um, we are teaching a handful of summer classes if you guys are interested in that sort of thing. I'll talk more about it later, but for now. Horses! I mean unicorns, which are basically magical horses. So sadly for everyone involved, I think if you ever want to, um, I guess, do art professionally at some point, I think it is a good idea to learn how to draw horses since we use horses a lot for everything and they are, you know, they are important animals to mankind. So, um, and sadly because they are so important, um, if we draw horses like incorrectly, it's really obvious. And on top of things, on top to make things worse, horses are really hard to draw because they're really weird looking animals. Um, sad to say, even though they are also majestic animals. Um, about to draw unicorns. I think the poll, like what one was like realistic unicorns. So we'll start with that. If we have time, we'll try and like do some stylizations and everything. Um, I say horses a lot, even though they're unicorns, but I guess I'll just be using it interchangeably just because, you know, reasons. Does anyone know how to ride horses? I feel like I've always wanted to, but it's like so scary. <laughs> I've never had like... I think there's one place nearby that may teach us that, but I've just been a little scared. Because they're so... they're ginormous! Whoa! That's cool. Alright, so I guess... You have to tell me how that looks like. So, <laughs> all right. So first off, things first things first. Um, I'll go over a little bit of like the anatomy of, of horses, which is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, we won't work on like you know the really big details at the moment, so I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Since I think horse anatomy is kind of funky, or a unicorn anatomy, or bad. So first things first, we have like, you know, kind of like this sort of head shape. And then we have, of course, the neck. And there's generally going to be like three-ish um, parts to a horse's body, right? Uh, and these are pretty general, so feel free to like um, wait for me to go over to explain each one first. Are we going to be using the last unicorn as a reference or inspiration? Hehe, <laughs> I was thinking about that during when I was making the poll. I wasn't sure if people would get it though, like my, I wanted my options to be like realistic unicorns, cheap unicorns, the last unicorn. But I was like, hmm, what if people think that's like a horror thing? Because I don't really, I'm like afraid of horror things. But yeah, I think I would like to if we have time. The last unicorn, very pretty movie. It's on my list of things to watch actually, because I heard it was sad so I was like, I need time to like, you know, be in that specific mood for sad stuff. Hi, Starverse! So there's gonna be three main 
parts of a ho of a unicorn's body. Um, and then of course the you might want to draw in like this sort of like line for like the ground plane. Um, and this will be important later. Like the legs are probably like the weirdest part of the horse's body, so we'll go over that in detail. So first things first, we have the this is just like our very very loose sketch, and for our skull, we probably don't have to worry too much about like the details as long as you know it's in this general shape. It's fine, you know. There's like eye sockets where the horse's eyes are. We'll go over that, and then. We have the spine next. This will also end with a tail, so one thing to note when you're coming down, that the spine actually does not go like straight um, and then like ends off like that. This is actually incorrect. Let's see if I can just... I think there is actually a tool for a clip, so... What we want to do actually is to go up a little, like a slant, and then go end off with our little like tail, which will vary as we go on. Then after that we have like the sort of ribcage area. Fun fact, horses don't have collarbones, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I don't know if that makes things easier or harder. And there will be this sort of like pointy thing that kind of like this ridge or spine um, that kind of goes through so you'll have to think of it like that um, if this is kind of like a weird shape for you to like understand just think of it as like um, Actually, maybe I'll just round it out a little bit so it's like less weird because I don't think it matters too much. We don't have to know too in detail. Just think of it as like a thimble, a sort of like thimble <laughs> kind of thumb shape. And then the third part is going to be kind of weird where this is going to be the pelvis area. Um, I guess so in terms of like comparative anatomy, um, this, all these parts are basically, if we were to see it on a human, it would be like a, a guy on his hands and knees, like this, like, <laughs> if that helps at all, like to figure out the placement. <laughs> so you want to think of these as like, as if, like it's a, the rib cage and like the pelvis is like facing the ground. Um, and so for a pelvis, I would just imagine like a sort of disc shape. Terrible disc shape. Hi, Cloudy. What kind of unicorns are you going to draw? The more colorful ones or the darker ones? I'll probably draw the colorful ones. Um, what dark unicorns are you thinking of? Feel free to like send examples and then maybe I'll draw them too if we have time. Pelvis like disc to like simplify. And then start with, let's see, congruent to, or well, I guess like on top of this is gonna be like the shoulder blade. So this is the shoulder blade. And then that's where, that's when we're gonna start like the arms and legs, which are gonna be kind of weird. Okay, and then... So, the weird thing is... It, I think, is like that the arms kind of go back first. And I feel like that always makes everything look weird. Because, of course, on like humans, our arms are just kind of like, go this way. And I'll try to... Maybe I'll enlarge this like little guy here so it's easier for people to like kind of compare. I'll like draw in like comparisons after. So that's gonna be our shoulder blade and then our equivalent to our um our arm. Like so this would be right here, this would be like the elbow, sort of. And I would actually recommend you kind of do this with 
like you do have this ground plane because personally i think one of my troubles is i always make like one leg like too tall and like the other legs like too short because i can't like figure it out but then here we have the forearm of the horse and then sort of like this sort of like hoof I'll just put like a joint here, this sort of like hoof thing, but this hoof is like quite um, complicated, so I'll try to break it down a little bit more. There's actually another joint here, and another joint here where the hoof is, but like I guess we don't have to think too much about it. But this is actually where the hoof is. The hoof is not like this whole area here. I'm sure people with um, uh, like actual horse knowledge would, un would already know like that the horse's leg is actually just like the equivalent of a human finger, the anatomy. So the horse's hoof is actually like your fingernail on a human. So if you think of it like that, then you'll see that I'm thinking, if I like remember properly, I might not, someone feel free to correct me. I think the, uh, the hand is actually like over here, like this area. And then this is just like the, the finger, like the single finger. <laughs> it's very weird. Uh, what else do we got? And then over here, actually we can just get, kind of put in the... back leg, which is pretty symmetrical. Or maybe I'll just put it out like this so it's not as, like, covered. I'll add labels and stuff as we go forward. But it's pretty... <laughs> I know it looks kind of janky, but we'll get around to it. Yeah, did you to grades? Um, I think ho horses specifically are ungulates, which means that they, because hooves are also different, because cows, they have like two hooves, like their hooves are like split, which means they have two, technically those are two fing like fingers or something, or like two, like something like that, but horses, their hooves are just one. We won't, we, tr we try, we try, we'll try not to get it like overcomplicated, but yeah, so... It turns out, but it turns out, you know, science is really complicated, apparently. So we'll have this. And then we have right here at the bottom of our little disc, our pelvis area, is going to be like the, that's where the legs start. If you're like, um, confused about like oh like the arms go back and then like but the legs like go forward normally just imagine this middle part as like a sort of diamond shape like that if that helps Let's see if I can draw that in a little And like the joints of like the hooves and stuff are kind of complicated, but for the most part, it's not something you have to like worry too much about until you're drawing them bending, <laughs> which is like, then it's like, but you know, that's fine. We're all here to learn. You don't have to know it like right away. And then at this, I think the joints of like the arms and the legs tend to be somewhat the same height. So that's how you can sort of like figure it out like that. And then, so joints should kind of be in the same-ish area. Da, da, da. The important thing I think is just to remember that the hooves like are actually like, they don't go straight down like that. They actually have like a little way forward like that like that <laughs> which is like really weird but horses you know so i think i probably made this horse a little bit kind of 
it's like too short because I think their necks are a bit longer. So I'll just make a move this maybe. And they also have like kind of like there's also this their neck kind of has this like flattish part here before they go like swooping back out into the tail. A horse's tail is pretty short, but because you know they have like the mane and all that stuff, um, this is also like not too important because then you can make it as long as you want. And we're drawing unicorns, so they can also be pretty much as long as you want as well. I have time, maybe I'll like uh, make this sketch a little bit more um, clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Are cylinders that OP in anatomy? I think so. I think it's just very easy to like imagine. But people are different because, for example, for... Um, some people like using boxes, some people like using spheres. I like using cylinders just because I think it's it, it gives you the best of both worlds. Um, for example, like people for like, you know, like a human head, people would probably be like... Either do like a box, right? And then like, this is like the front. Or they'll be like, here's a circle. And then draw like the jaw or something, right? Um, personally, I just like using a cylinder because then you still have like the this, I, this perspective where like you know um, which way is like up. So if I was tilting, you would know like that. Um, and you still sort of have like this rounded like edge to see where things are going. I think for oh, unicorns, it should probably be similar. Okay, so I'll just color this stuff in now. The equivalence, so here's like the red. I think this would be about the This is like the, the arm, the elbow, and then this would be like the hand. And this is the finger. Boxes and circle, yeah, pretty much. What have you guys been up to lately? Anyways, well, like I guess how the week been going. Is it still a school week? Is it is summer here yet? <laughs> I don't know any of the dates now. Drawing and animating, hell yeah. Heck yeah, I mean, what uh, what sort of animation program are you using? I want summer to end. <laughs> For me, summer is here, but I still have school. I see. I'm sure that's fine. 
Do you ever get a chance you can do Kitsune rail pose positions? Sure. I mean, maybe if we get if we have time, or it'll be something for like another video. So then, when horses, uh, their legs bend, I guess, or they're like, ground, I guess I'll just add like the horn here, so we know. <laughs> um, so because we have all these joints, we know how things bend, sort of bend now. So just keep in mind, like this part will tend to not be as uh, great of a change. So the part where the horse, like you know, when they like raise up and neigh, it's like we're here. That's where like they start raising their legs up and hopefully like I'm not butchering this <laughs> something like this this is not a very attractive hoof but actually I think it would be more like something like this this is the hoof I'll have to Like that. Flash <laughs> So it'll be something like this. And then the extra hoof part. There's a joint like that bends like the hoof, so. which can be a little complicated. But that is the basic anatomy for a unicorn slash horse. Uh, yeah, I still think this is probably just too um, <laughs> squished. So I'm just going to move it out. Just like that. Sometimes that stuff happens, like, I think that's probably my biggest struggle, making sure that they have, like, that they're long enough, because they're kind of, they're, they're weird, because humans have, are quite close, but we need to be long enough that they have, like, their belly, right? Sometimes I just stick it too close, though. But, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen that, that much smog either, but my friend in, um, I think, Etobicoke has been suffering a lot, <laughs> from what he tells me. Okay, so this is basic. As usual, drawing horses is probably a very good way to um, practice. <laughs> what type of drawing is drawing with line? Not use curve, only less cute, more straight lines for drawing faces. Um, yeah, I guess angular. Are unicorns just horses with horns? Um, pretty much. I mean, that's how I see them. Uh, fun fact, I guess. Uh, I think the the myth of the unicorn started because, um, you know, ancient times people would draw like very graphic things, and they would actually draw like bulls, like like that. And then like bulls have like, or oryx back then they had like these horns that would be facing like this, right? But because they were always in um, in profile that people like other people would like see it and be like oh it's a it's a one horned like you know horse or something and then i think that's how the unicorn myth got started so that was pretty cool <laughs> yeah they do have magical qualities 
but, but because somebody mentioned the last unicorn, I would just I'd like to try and draw the like sort of stylized way and point out how they stylize it. So I think the last unicorn is like a anime, sort of. With a very it was about the last unicorn is very sad. I haven't watched like the full thing. But I would like to. So as you for the last unicorn, maybe I'll bring up a ref. So it has a very graceful like sort of character design. As you can see, they also simplified everything a lot, so you don't have to like memorize like every single thing here. It kind of looks more like a, a little like a deer, but that's also fine, very graceful. As you can see, well, the only thing that they really um, kept in mind was the Hooves. Huh, this one actually has like, their hooves actually like, are split. I don't know if that's like, my inaccuracy or their inaccuracy, but we'll, whatever. So, as you can see, they don't even like, on the last game card, they don't even like, show the, um, like the shoulder blade and like the additional arm here. And then that, they just stick to showing what is like out of the body, so you can do that too. It might be easier for like, you know, just so you're not overwhelmed with like the amount of joint and stuff. And it's like a very graceful. I think it's a good idea to know it's just there because then you can draw like this sort of like curve. And very swoopy, very graceful. <laughs> Last unicorn. Oh, and then this unicorn actually has a really cute like long tail instead of like the little mane. That's so cute, I love it. <laughs> and then they have like their unicorn horn, of course. One thing to note on real horses is that their eyes are on the sides of their heads because they are prey animals. So if you draw like, I guess, a horse, this is gonna be a very terrible drawing. <laughs> But um, their eyes will be so you won't have a horse that's like you know <laughs> like this.
just try and make this a bit clearer. <laughs> when I'm using Ibis paint, it's more easy to draw with my fingers. Yeah, whatever you like. <laughs> I think a lot of people use their phones for like sketchbook stuff now. And I feel like a phone is too, sometimes it's too small to have like, to hold like, to put your whole fist holding a pen onto it. Oops. Isn't drawing from the computer hard? Uh, not particularly. I think it is a, it's definitely like, cause there's different types of tablets. There's like screen tablets, which is you can kind of see like what you're drawing on. So it's just like drawing on paper, except for, I guess, the feeling is a little slippery. Um, and then there's like regular tablets, I guess, which are much cheaper that most people will probably have, which is like, so, you know, there's like screen tablets, which is what I have. So I can see like, you know, all my layers and everything, and then I can just draw. And then there's the, I think, are they called touch tablets or just pen tablets? And they just have a screen like this that is just like um, gray and then you just draw on it but you have to look at like your actual computer to see like where the mouse is and then that can be a little bit challenging but I don't think that is when I like because I've used both I don't think either are that difficult to pick up it just might be a little like weird for like the first week or so but most people are able to pick it up pretty easily and some people prefer like the pen tablet because then you don't have to have your hand in front of your face while you're drawing which I think some people um, don't like that when they're doing traditional work either because then you have to like kind of you'll destroy your back when you're like looking over and like trying to see like where exactly is like you know your cursor and everything with your hand in the way Alright, so for our last unicorn, the hair is very pretty, very beautiful, very voluminous. We can pretty much go wild uh, with like the mane and stuff. I think because unicorns are so mythical, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Like add braids, add jewelry, <laughs> add fluff, whatever you want. The tail too. Um, as a unicorn, we can kind of uh, pick and choose like what kinds of like attributes we want to um, like enlarge or make smaller or like hide for example they don't show the shoulder blades as much in this one for this design because they are keeping this design very streamlined very graceful they elongate it as you can see it's like kind of the, the some things are kind of there but this is like all like your artistic sensibility and your um, your character design coming into play like I think she has bangs <laughs> yeah something like that when draw when thinking of like stuff like that um, just think of it as like you know the head here and then just remember that the ears will peek out from the top either in whichever direction and then just remember it, like the hair will kind of like pop through like in front of it like that and around it and then the rest of it you can pretty much do whatever you want um i think the last unicorn's eyes are also very anime because it is like an older animated film um one thing to note is that i guess for real horses is that they don't have i think in animals in general um you don't really see the whites of their eyes unless usually something bad is happening so um like if you have if you have cats um, or dogs, you'll notice that like you don't really see like the whites of their eyes unless they're looking like really like to the side, and then like they have that really like funny look where they'll just like your dog or something will just be like will be like that, and it's like mm. they look kind of like <laughs> like <laughs> kind of silly. 
that is actually like an animal thing where you don't like so for a horse so if this horse's eyes were blue it would you would mostly see like just something like that which i guess looks creepy <laughs> obviously this is like you know a cartoon so you're not beholden to that but just something to note i guess i think it's because um i read that because humans evolve to like work together and to communicate um we show we we show our eyes like the whites of our eyes so that we'll be able to tell like where we're looking and stuff um who like our gaze is directed to but animals are like in the wild right and it's really important for them to like be strong so they you don't see the whites of their eyes so you can't tell it's harder to tell which way they're facing so if you're a prey animal then a predator can't like be like okay they're like not looking my way so i can like attack and i guess for predators it's like the same where well actually I need to think about that because I'm basing this on like cats, but cats are also prey animals, so it's quite possible for them to like have both sorts of like attributes. Anyways, well, <laughs> science. Yeah, it's really cool, right? So like, um, I think it's because so the way it, I read it was that it was described as like, um. Showing the whites of your eyes is like a sign of trustworthiness or something, because then you can tell like where it's like communication. So, and animals have to hide it, like their weaknesses. So you know, they have to deceive other animals to survive. It's very cool. So let's see. I'll see if I can draw maybe the. If we want it to be a little bit more anatomically correct, I'll like lighten this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think babies also like they. I'm not a. I am the furthest thing from like a baby expert you can be, but I think they like base their rea as they're learning. They base their reactions on how their parents react to things. So like, if it's like dark. Or something like the lights turn off and then the parents start screaming then the baby will be like oh my god we're, we're dying but if we're like calm then like they won't do anything and i think like my cats do that too sometimes where like if there's like a, a friend who comes over then they'll like stare at me and then if i don't react they'll be like okay i guess this person's not a murderer <laughs> it's very interesting So as you can see, they really simplified down certain aspects of the um, anatomy for the for this design in a very graceful way. Simplified anatomy. I guess exaggerated too. For the sake of design and appeal. I feel like if I had to describe this design, it would be like long and graceful. And they also like, you know. The tail is also long and graceful. Long and graceful tail. So it's all just emphasizing like a certain like vibe, you know? Yeah, nature is really, really interesting. Hello, painting of grace. And then we can kind of see like, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna bring in some 
MLP stuff, <laughs> just to like compare. Like how simplified you can go. If I can find like a proper screenshot. I guess it's actually pretty interesting to see like um, like I think this is like a more recent kind of <laughs> like uh, design and then if you look at like the older versions which I'll bring up here <laughs> Quite interesting. For example, for these guys, they like they made their heads a lot bigger and a lot more graphic. I think this one's like I, I don't want to say it's more realistic, but it, it's. <laughs> It is a little more like anatomically, like, cor I don't want to say correct, but it's like, I guess it's more realistic. They do look a little like more like baby animals than they do like in like this one where they just look like cartoons. As you can see, they really simplified like the hooves and stuff. They don't like they know. They're like this is way too hard to draw. It's way too annoying to deal with. So <laughs> they're just going to um really just like make it these like uh these little cloppy <laughs> nubs. So you can go pretty far with this, even though horses are like really kind of difficult. Um, you know, as you choose, there is a little bit of um, the back leg, the an an anatomy that like they can't really like oops, get away with leaving alone, which is like this sort of zigzag pattern or zigzag shape. Um, but that's not too bad, right? I know they like forego like this whole arm area really in a, in a lot of designs, and then this one is a lot more like puffy. I feel like in general for the design, very thick. <laughs> I think toys. It, it's because they're like they're gonna be made into toys, so they actually have like they're separated into parts that I think can be easily built. Um, so in a way, it's a bit like 3D modeling. But still pretty cool, I think, to consider in like your character designs. I guess this one does not have a... They don't all have unicorn horns, but we'll just add them in because, you know, that's what we're drawing. I do think the I, I have also have not really like par partake in like the My Little Pony stuff. Um, I actually think maybe this horn would be like a nubbier since it is a nubby design. So I also like don't really know like the lore or anything like that. I do think their songs were really like they were pretty good bops. I would say. <laughs> Very simplified. Mm -hmm. 
And for these guys, it's like really like exaggerated. Um, I'm told, or I, I'm told that the reason why like cartoons have such huge eyes is because they are like generally for kids. So kids need like, like we were talking about with like, you know, the eye whites and like communication. It's easier for them to tell what's going on, like the, to read if their eyes are huge. Um, and that's why they ha and like I guess for most kids shows the characters in these shows are kids so I guess they would have like bigger baby heads since like they're also like babies but you know hard to say and they have big ears too I guess like comparatively big ears very like you know baby proportions <laughs> And they still have, like, they maintain that backslide, actually. That's interesting. <laughs> I did not notice. And they, there's like, of course, MLP is a lot more. Um, so in 2D animation, there's something called, like, puppet rigs. So I'm pretty sure, like, they also have to take that into account when they're creating these characters. So what that means is that they have to be able to break each part of the character's body into separate parts. So for example, with this leg, would be like probably like split into these three um, shapes and there will be like joints sort of on every single like point I mean that's how I imagine it anyways um, I don't know for sure how complex their rigs are but yeah so like they are very very like <laughs> they don't even have like little bend that like the the older version has. They're just like straight up like, nah, we're not dealing with that. <laughs> That's super cool. They also don't actually have the bend in like their back legs too. It's just like the, it's the back part that gives the shape. That's really cute actually. That's really cool. It's like a pretty cool illusion. And I guess we can like, you know, do whatever we want with like the, the hair. I'll just try to make it kind of similar to what we've been drawing already. And I guess this one would have a little bit more, like, length. Interesting, huh? Not even bends. Front or back. Gives the yes. Unicorn from Scarborough Fair video. I don't know if I I know what Scarborough Fair is. Very cool song, but not the video. Very interesting. Interesting. The animated one by Dan Evaden. I don't think I've seen that one. Let me take a look. Dan Evaden. Oh, dang. 
That's a pretty cool... That's Sorry to hear the... see. I'm gonna like play through it um, to see if there's anything. Screenshots. Or I guess not. This is a reaction actually. Oh! This is a very cute looking horse. I'll just try and like take some. Ugh, this video is very bad quality though, so. Sorry in advance for like how crunchy this screenshot kind of looks. It looks kind of similar. Oh, they have like the long tail as well. I wonder if that's a unicorn thing. Either way, I think it's adorable. I feel like I have to... Oh! Are all of the horses? Hmm. Well, we'll see. This horse was like very like realistic um, and like they're definitely more like anatomically like correct or like maybe not correct but like anatomically <laughs> aware. Screenshots are a little unclear, so sorry in advance. I don't know how accurate this is gonna be. But they definitely have like more of a realistic horse kind of design. Their unicorn horn is very small. And they're uh, their mane is like not as fluffy, kind of droops. And you kind of see like the, like this, these sorts of lines here, which is basically the, like, it's like the part down their neck of like their hair. So that's useful.
Interesting. Then they have like their long tail, which I think is so cute. Might just be like a few size adjustments. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different ways to draw unicorns. I think their face is probably a little bigger. <laughs> Are you guys like, I don't know, horse girls, horse people? Interesting, they have like a little like a sort of brow ridge in their horse designs. I'm actually pretty interested in like how people draw like their animal designs since I'm not as great at it. Head probably needs to be a little smaller and their neck bigger. Of course, have pretty st strong necks, so. Something like so. Oh, wow, really? That's pretty cool. Are they an animator? Oh, ponies are fun too, of course. This one is... What was this again? Scarborough Is it Dan? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it looks like me anymore, but thank you. Oh yeah, the summer intensive. Um, 
If this sort of thing is like really interesting to you guys, you guys can also join our summer classes. We have a c quite a few on um, on offer at the moment, and if you like, you know, if you guys go to Jesse's streams or Iggy's streams, they're also teaching stuff over the summer, and I think Josh is teaching our animated our animation stuff too. So if you guys are interested in animating, there's also that class. Did you guys do buildings in different perspectives? Uh, yeah, probably in like another video. Probably not this one. Um, I believe... Um, let's see. So I think I'm teaching digital art this... Uh, this month in July. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in like this sort of format where you guys ask questions, pick my brain, and then I just answer them. That's probably something you guys might be interested in. You can also do that for Jesse and Iggy and Josh if they have like a particular way of drawing or expertise you guys have always been dying to ask. So that was pretty much your chance. And you know, it's, I think it'll be nice to like kind of chat throughout the summer. But of course we'll still be doing streams, if that's like a concern or anything. Something about like, uh, horses is that they have like this sort of chest muscle here that, is pr that I think is usually visible. Um, so don't forget that as well. Animation is hard. I try to can't. I put, can't put my mind in it. Um, that's okay. Animation is hard. You're right. Uh, so you can't expect to sort of learn it very quickly. Unfortunately, that's something I struggle with as well because I've been trying to teach myself again how to animate and going through the principles and everything. It's very difficult, very annoying, and I think it's also really hard to find feedback unless you're in school because most people online um, are either don't know what they're talking about, uh, or I think they uh, kind of care about the wrong things for animation, um, and it's just like, I I'm sure with every art form, it's just really difficult to find feedback that pertains to you, um, which is why classes are always useful, uh, but also a community, like our discords and stuff. It might be easier like if people like get to know you and understand your level and what you're what you want to do that they'll be able to give better advice and i do think sadly feedback is probably the easiest way to improve unfortunately because i hate getting feedback sometimes 20 cells is one sec um yes most of the time it's 24 um if you're talking about frames the cells are something different. Um, so that's one thing to worry about as well. And 20 sec- yeah, like 10 seconds, that's pretty long. That's- if you- because if, if it's 24 frames per second, 24 times 10, I'm not good at math, but I <laughs> think that is- is that 240 or is that too- like, that's 240, right? Don't laugh at me if I'm wrong. <laughs> But that's 240 like frames, 240 drawings. So it and like throughout that entire like sequence, you have to like be consistent and be like accurate and like all that stuff. And ugh. so yeah, quite a feat. Two minutes? That's crazy. I under I understand though. My I've done like. Like for my, for my boards, even they're just they're just boards, but um, so you don't draw as much as animation. But it was really hard, um, for my portfolio when I was making, like a two minute, board, and I was like, this is this is terrible. <laughs> so yeah, you know, animation's pretty pretty hard. 
That's why it's good to do a lot of small ones instead of like a huge one off the bat. Although I'm sure like that's also like a rite of passage probably for everyone because we get told not to do things like that, but we all do them anyways. <sighs> Unicorns. Flynn Rider vibes from the unicorn. <laughs> I think this unicorn in this in like this music video was a lot more um, <laughs> had a f more of a face <laughs> that was like distinct. Did you guys, like, have any of you guys been to, like, the animation streams that we've had? Did you guys enjoy it? <laughs> I count with my fingers, too. I'm not... Ugh. I have so much, like, math trauma. Um, but I'm actually gonna learn, like, a little bit of programming in the future, so I'm just like, ugh. I need to get over, like, my math trauma, you know? Because there's one key difference that it took me many years to learn after graduating. And that's, no one cares if you use a calculator when you're an adult, because, you know, why, why wouldn't you? Technology is like, you know, use technology, right? So after that, it's like, okay, I won't get judged on like, you know, counting on my fingers anymore because, and if I do, it's like, you know, well, you suck. So whatever. <laughs> it's like, the only reason you wouldn't is if you want to flex. So it's like. Okay then, flex, whatever. Still get the same result. Oh, thank you, Luna. I'm happy you're here too. Like this is kind of off somehow. Think I do like streaming and meeting you guys. I feel like it's good to like poke my head in every once in a while. And like you know, it like I don't get the chance to like talk to people. Or to talk like that much, so I'm like, ugh, I need to remember, or else I'm gonna like forget how to move my mouth. Kirins? I think so. Are those like the mythological Japanese creatures? They also have horns. really huge cheeks, uh, which is funny to say. And then their ears, I think, point. are kind of like this, tops of their, their heads.
and then like two additional balls for their eyes. I know, right? <laughs> like, use the use the calculator, man. Like, once you like grow up, and then you realize there's like, there's no reason not to like, you know, use what's available to you. Like, even I think doctors look things up in like the like textbooks and stuff because, of course, the important thing is to get it like, you know, is to just get the job done. And like, it doesn't matter if like you can just remember it or whatever, right? So I feel like once I realized that. Um, I guess math got a little less scarier because it actually doesn't really matter if like I'm personally good at math or not because we have computers who'll do that for me. <laughs> so it's like, who cares, right? The only people who care are gonna be like, I don't know. Like, it's also like, what kind of person cares if like you're good at math or not, to be honest? <laughs> like, stuff like that. How long will the stream be? I think it's going on for maybe 20 more minutes. Is that how long it usually goes, Daria? I feel like 4.30, right? like specific unicorn questions you guys got? I think that's true actually, Kenny, because like um, teaching is really secure, um, especially in like high school and elementary. I mean, I've heard that it's paid badly, but I don't know. It's also it's supposed to be pretty secure because I remember there was like, we had a terrible teacher who would um who would i don't know he would like talk about a lot of like weird like he'd have really weird opinions like how he thought like you know he was like misogynist like i guess right um and then like remember we would like complain and they would just be like well like too bad i guess because <laughs> like they just i don't know he's on like just the way like the hiring process works like they're just on and they're on like for a really long time, like, can't really do anything about it, so it was like, well, we'll just be make sure not to take classes with this guy then, because he's just kind of a weirdo. Yeah, I think it's also really difficult, because, like, I think, um, like, even if they love teaching, they have, there's a lot of, like, busy work, like, they have to set up the classrooms and then clean it up, and, like, all, like, the creative things, like, the cool things you see in classrooms, like, all the charts and, like, the arrangement, they have to do that themselves. So I, you can imagine how all those desks and all those chairs and like, and kids are messy too. So like all that stuff. And like at the end of the school year, they gotta clear it out. So they can't leave it in there. And then they have to remake it again when they come back. So that's also like just a lot of work. So even if they do love it, I think they do get like pretty tired.
I've had some really good teachers. Um, have actually have I? I've had like I think maybe I've had a lot that were fine. I've had like maybe two or three that I remember because of like they made like an impact on me, and the rest were some of them were weird. Um, there's like three or four that I remember that were just like. <laughs> like even as like I don't know, a young child you kind of know like I don't know if you'd like you know as an adult or like as a professional teacher you should be talking about your home life like in class or like your personal views on like I don't know <laughs> like just like stuff you know so some people are definitely weird but yeah most of the most for the most part I think teaching can be pretty rewarding yeah, like, I remember I would have... Oh, bye, Rose. Thank you for coming. I do remember there would be, like... Like, I have one teacher that I did really like, and... Um, but I guess, like, ap around that time when, like, they would start, like, marking everything, she'd get so cranky, and she'd be like, I don't have time for you guys, like, right now, like, with your shenanigans, and I'd like, whoa, okay. And even in college, I remember this one, like, the head of my college experience or whatever like i don't know coordinator i don't know what they call those people he was like so overly stressed that he would be so cranky and it would be so like annoying to be honest because like it's not <laughs> it's no one's fault but like your own because he like he kept like another job on top of being like managing the school stuff and then it just like i know it's hard but also i think taking it out on your students is like wrong in any case. Profile, maybe? Ugh. Tough stuff. <laughs> yeah, shenanigans. Like, yeah, teachers are human, but I think in a position where, like, they're, like, in positions of power, I guess, I feel like taking it out on your students is probably not great. But on the bright side, I don't think a lot of people are like that. I think most teachers are like very like good, well-meaning people, so probably not something people deal with all the time. Yeah, right? Like, I think one of my high school teachers, like, on a school trip, she would cry. Like, she went to, because I think she wanted to be a photographer or something. And she, like, we went on, like, a school trip downtown to visit some, like, photography shops and stuff. And she, like, cried because, like, she was like, this is, like, my dream. But, like, I'm not achieving it. And I was like, buddy. <laughs> like, sorry. But also, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Like, what are we... Like, what are we supposed to do as, like, 8th graders? <laughs> Sorry you're suffering, but, um... Maybe you want to keep it to yourself just for a little bit. Bye, Smee. There's some teachers that really just seem like they hate being in school, which is interesting. You would assume they would try like to not be in like that sort of situation if they like disliked it so much.
What age is the typical 8th grade student? Um, I think in my day it was... What is the age of a typical 8th grade student? Um... I think about 13 to 14. That sounds about right. Yeah. Of course, I remember when I was 13 to 14, I thought I was so, like... I thought I was, like, the... The hot stuff, I guess. I was like, yeah, I'm so old. I'm like an adult. I can do like whatever I want. <laughs> but like looking back, I'm like, dang, so baby. <laughs> it's like I'm not like you know like I'm I'm t like 13 now. I am I'm, I'm an adult. I'm a grown up or whatever. <laughs> so silly. Um, I guess in Canada... When did high school start for me? Yeah, it started at 9th grade. I know there's middle school where... I think that's 6 to 8? Um... But I just went from like... For me, it was like elementary school up until 8th grade and then I just went to high school. For 9th to 12th. I don't know what goes into like uh, the, the decision making of whether you go to like middle or like not. <laughs> here with unicorns. I guess I could draw like some random cute unicorn. <laughs> I think I did too. I think I watched at least one My Little Pony movie when I was a kid. It was very, very cool for my little kid brain. Are you a fan of horror art? Sadly, I am not. <laughs> or I guess, like, I am a fan of... <laughs> it's very difficult. I like horror... Like, I I'm curious. Like, I want to know, like, horror stories. But, like, horror visually stuff if it's too like if it's too like scary or too like gross then like I don't really like it but I like knowing like the horror lore I guess right so I just end up reading everything on Wikipedia and then like scaring myself <laughs> maybe there's like the uh the horse from Elsa from Frozen That was very interesting, I thought. Unfortunate it wasn't it didn't play too big of a role in the story. <laughs> Have you ever played horror games? I played Um I played Dark Souls. I don't know if that's horror. I don't think so. Although they ha they have like horror elements. Um, Bloodborne I played. I really like Bloodborne. But Bloodborne is also like... Because it is a video game and not meant to... 
frighten you or traumatize you i don't think like because you can it's like an action game mostly so you can fight against these like horrible monsters so that wasn't scary at all um visually i also thought it was very cool if it was kind of because um but you know FromSoft has like a design philosophy which is a little different um i did enjoy i watched a playthrough of the last of us which i did think was very I did like, even though it was also like, that's horror, right? <laughs> it, I thought it was gross, but it was still like, I could still watch it. I don't know if I can watch the the show because of how like, you know, overly gory it would be, because I don't really like gore. Kelpie! I see. I like artistic horror. I don't know how to call it, what to call it. Uh, but I like things that make you kind of like shiver or like feel a little spooky or like little like things like ha like haunted mansion where it's like oh something something spooky and scary happened here. What happened? And it has like a whole little story where like I don't know some guy's dead wife or some guy's like you know long lost daughter haunts the halls and like something like that all the people are trapped there and like they have never left they're like watching you through like the paintings that stuff i think is kind of cool other stuff is like i don't know things like that i think are okay or like gothic stuff i guess is cool like Yeah, Castlevania. The last of a show with Pedro Pascal, who I <laughs> who I like very much. Oh yeah, I'll have to look that up. I've watched um, was it Magnetic Rose? I don't know if that was. I, I thought that was cool. Hold on, let me see. Was it Magnetic Rose? Yeah, it was Magnetic Rose. Um, it was like a short in Katsuhiro's Otomo's Memories. I really like that. I don't know if that was quite a horror either. It was just spooky. <laughs> right. What else can I add here? How the legs bend a little. Whose will face inward? I should say curl. 
What do we do if the eyes look wrong or might what might cause the eyes to look wrong? Um, sometimes it is because of this, <laughs> where if like the if you if the eyes are like forward facing and then um, that automatically looks really weird. Um, additionally, I think horse uh, horse eyes um, are more like sort of the eyes can be stylized, so that's why like there's a lot of like uh, variation. But for the most part, I think they're kind of like some things to check if your eyes are looking weird is either the uh, slant. So like, are the eyes kind of like? Make sure they're like far apart. So like, you should really on like depending on how realistic you want it to be, you should only really be seeing one eye, and then maybe the eye like the brow or like the lid of the eye on the other side. And then if you're not sh if it's like looking weird. Then you want to kind of make sure it's like. Sometimes we have we make the mistake of doing something like this, I think. <laughs> so it looks kind of awkward. You gotta remember that the eyes are like sort of in or like kind of fitted into like the skull. Um, whoops. So sometimes you gotta make sure like is it oriented correctly, like so. So this, I'm gonna just for the just for simplification, I'm just gonna say like the slant. Is it like instead of something like an eye like this? Is it like like this? You know? Is that close to like what you were asking, or is it something else? Additionally, um, I think it's useful to remember, like the pers like sadly, like the perspective of the eye, because it is sort of this like orb. So the eye, like if you're looking, it probably won't be like um, it, it won't kind of be like this, or I guess. It won't be like this exactly. You kind of have to like give it a sort of like the eye direction. Sometimes if we just do this, it can look kind of like like where is it look where is the the character looking? So it's important to sort of know. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, and I guess that's all the time we have for today, so... <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys! Um, I really appreciate it. Remember, we have our summer camps and intensives, and you guys can check out more of that on our website and on our Discord. Um, but yeah, I teach digital art 1 and 2 summer camp and summer camp uh, this for July, so if you guys want to talk to me more, you can check that out. And yeah, so I hope you guys have a really nice weekend. Thanks for coming, and it was really nice meeting you all. Oh, hi, Robin. <laughs> Thanks for coming anyways. See you later.